Physical Geography of the United States and Canada, Part 1. There are two parts to this. We'll be doing the first part tonight um, with this notes guide, and we'll be moving to the second part in the human geography of the United States and Canada or North America um, after that. So let's get started. All right. So first, we're talking about the United States of America. We know about the United States of America. That is where we live. Here we go right here in Louisiana. Um, the United States is made up of 50 states. There are the 48 continuous states. And when we say continuous states, we mean the states that touch one another and Alaska and Hawaii. Just a quick FYI for you guys, the, the state, I'm sorry, the territory of Puerto Rico is located right around here, has recently um, filed a petition or a referendum, a referendum has posted where they want to go from being um, statehood, go to being a territory to a state. So we might have 51 states soon. Um, Canada. Now talking about our neighbors to the north, that is Canada. Canada is made up of the 10 provinces and three territories. The United States also has territories, but our territories are Puerto, uh, Puerto Rico, the Philippines, America, Samoa. So territories are just places that are not official states. The citizens of territories, they have um, citizenship status, but they do not have all of the states themselves do not have full voting rights. OK. Now talking about the regions of the United States generally when we talk about the regions there are the four major regions um, the Northeast the Midwest the South and the West and we'll get a little bit more into this so the Northeast the first region we'll discover discuss is the Northeast these are the states that you guys mostly think of uh, these are the first states that were founded uh, the, generally, the largest cities are found in the Northeast. These are the cities that um, the states are New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, Connecticut, Massachusetts, New Jersey, a lot of the original 13 colonies. It's where most of the wealth of the nation. This is the wealthiest part of our nation. This is also the oldest part of our nation in the Northeast. Uh, the Midwest. The states that make up the Midwest, we're referring to places like Illinois, Indiana, Missouri, uh, Minnesota, South Dakota, North Dakota, Nebraska, Michigan, Ohio. So this is what we refer to when we mean uh, the Midwest. Then the South. It's easy for me to think about the South. Two ways to think about it. One, if you're a history person, you can think about this as most of the states that were in the Confederacy of the Civil War. So these were the states that fought on the South Side. Um, but if you're a college football fan, these are most of the states in the Southeastern Conference. So <laughs> that's how I think about it. Uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas, Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, and you add Georgia, I mean, then you add um, North Carolina, Tennessee, and Texas. Generally, what college football is really, really good, good, that's most of the states in the South. And then the West. The West is tends to be um, the newer states. If we have the newer states, um, these are the newest states. It's been about, I think, 50 years since we had the last state. And that was Hawaii to come into the nation. But before the newer states are the states that are in the West. And you're thinking about California, Alaska, Hawaii, uh, Utah, Oregon. Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, New Mexico. So these are generally the states that make up. Um, these are the states that make up the regions. The West, Midwest, Northeast, and South. What you want to think about is that the Northeast are the most populous area. It's the most people. It's also the smallest area. Smallest and wealthiest. Um, this is the newest area. It's also the most spread out. This is where um, the fewest amount of people live. Per square mile, okay, population density, the smallest population density is in the west. The south, um, we have the best football. No, <laughs> uh, the south is generally we're experiencing rapid population growth in the south from other parts. Natural population growth uh, from immigration. Also, though, too, from people moving in, internal migration from other regions of the nation moving into the south. You have baby boomers or people who retire with their wealth in the north or from the northeast. They move to the south for the climate. 
Now, there are a couple of homework questions. Make sure that you are answering these. I'll be checking them um, for them. It's in your notes guide, so I'll be checking to make sure that you answer them still. In order to see full credit for your notes guide, you have to have answered these. So, real quick, we've talked about regions before. We've said regions can be based on facts like the government or physical feature, uh, systems like railways, or opinions like cultural aspects. When we talk about the regions of the United States, which would do you think these regions are based on? So going back really quickly, when we talk about the Northeast, the West, the Midwest, or the South, how do we classify these regions? Are these, um, are these regions based on facts, systems, or opinions, cultural aspects? And depending on how you answer it, um, what type of region is it then? So going as we discuss the United States a little bit more, we'll talk about some of the physical features in the United States or North America. I apologize. Um, and one of the prominent physical features in North America runs from Alaska right into Central America and is called the Continental Divide. Continental Divide. Um, it's part of the Rocky Mountains in the United States. And if you see this red line runs across the Continental Divide, it goes from Alaska, almost to the part of Alaska where it touches um, Europe and, and Russia, or it touches Asia and Russia. Um, through Canada, through the United States, down through Central America. It's a mountains, it's a, it's a chain of mountains. And in the United States, we call these the Rocky Mountains. The Rocky Mountains are part of the Continental Divide. Um, and what a divide is, this is just a high point or a set of ridges that determines the directions that rivers flow. Please make sure you understand this. What a divide is, it is a high point or ridge that determines the direction that rivers flow. And what that means is we'll discuss it a little bit more in depth here on what this actually means is that places east of the Continental Divide. This is the Continental Divide. Once again, all points east of the Continental Divide the waters flow into the east. They flow into the east, into the Arctic Ocean, um, to the Hudson Bay, to the Atlantic Ocean, to the Gulf of Mexico. So all rivers or all waterways that fall on this side of the continental divide, divide the water flows this way. Now, to the west of the continental divide, all waters flow west into the Pacific Ocean. So it's important to understand what a divide is because once you understand what a divide is, it shows you, it helps you understand trade, it understand, helps you understand how um, civilizations or cultures developed because early ancient man, they had to go where the water flowed. Early, early ancient man. So if the water flowed here only to the west, then you could only go to the west or only to the right. And we mean early, early ancient man, um, you know, people in canoes and things not having motorized transit or motorized transport talking about some of the distinct waterways in the united states we'll, we'll touch on two big ones um and then we'll move forward a little bit the missouri river is located right in the northern part of the united states it is actually the longest river in north america it begins in montana and it extends down to missouri now, the Mississippi River, which was at one time the longest river in the United States, it runs approximately 2,300 miles. It starts in Minnesota, and it goes down from Minnesota to the mouth of the Mississippi River, of course, stopping and passing along right here in the great um, passing near um, Gonzales and Baton Rouge and emptying out into the Mississippi River. Into the Gulf of Mexico, where it empties out. The part where it comes out into the Gulf of Mexico is about a mile wide. So if any of you guys have ever gone um, deep down the bayou, far down Pierre Part, Sunshine, Port Sulphur. Uh, I'm sorry, deep in Pierre Part. Port Sulphur, Sunshine, all those places down and deep in Plaquemines Parish, Bouville, Bayou Venice, all those places. that act, Those are the places where the Gulf of Mexico empties out into. If you think about Swamp People, that show that I should not watch, that makes the um, Louisiana look bad. 
the Indians, the home Indians, they they hunt down on those it, down this way. Jay Paul and RJ, those are my favorite guys on there. That this is where they hunt in the bottom of the Mississippi River in those areas. I'm sorry, in the bottom of the the mouth of the Mississippi River. Mississippi River. All right, the end. Make sure you answer those questions. This was a real short video. Make sure you answer the questions. Um, have a good evening. I will see you in class.